All right, let's go back to our reference one more time. And we'll start creating the actual spout here. And this will be you know, quite simple for us to do. Uh, we just have two pieces here, and they're both pretty simple in shape, so uh, this should only take a couple of seconds. Uh, let's grab that piece there. We'll hide everything else. So once again, hide on select it. Jump into our right view here. Let's disable this turtle smooth for a second. Okay, and we'll go into the bottom view. And let's switch this maybe to the top. Uh, let's just leave it at the bottom. Doesn't really matter. So let's go back into shapes here. We'll start this with a cylinder. All right, so I'm just going to drag that out in the center. Roughly a little bit smaller than the hole. All right, let's give it some height here as well. And we'll just kind of line this up by eye. All right, so just make sure it's touching up with those edges around the hole. Something like that looks pretty good. Uh, let's also re enable the sword smooth here for, uh, for a second actually so we can see the hole smooth. All right, let's reselect our cylinder there. Let's crank up the sides a bit. Let's do maybe like uh, 40. Okay, and let's just move this into position here in the side view. All right, so I'll tuck that right up in the body. Let's get rid of these height settings. We don't need those. And we probably don't need to have 40 sides. Let's do maybe like 24. Okay, and we'll just bring this down a little bit in height. And maybe around 100 or so for now. Okay, and we'll just adjust the radius here so that we have a little bit of a gap between both objects. Okay, so let's take that down a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do around 36, 37, and maybe about 100 or so on the height. Okay, so let's collapse this dead wall poly now. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the top and bottom polygons. So let's grab all of them, hold down Alt, deselect the side ones. So you just have the two caps and delete them. And let's go to vertex here, grab the bottom vert. So we need to scale this in to uh, get a taper. So let's just scale it down on X and Y at the same time. Okay, and it just has a slight taper. We don't want to go crazy on it. So maybe like that. Okay, and that might be a little too long. Let's just bring it up a little bit more. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for the taper. We can adjust it later if we need to. Uh, let's go to border, grab the bottom border here. I'm just going to scale this in holding shift. Maybe something like that. Let's also maybe just bring it down a bit here to get a bevel. Okay. And let's go over to edge here. I'm just going to loop this edge and chamfer it. Let's do two segments. And I don't want this to be super sharp. Let's do uh, maybe around one on the amount. Okay, we do want to have you know um, polygons on the inside here in case you can see up in one of the renders. Uh, so to do that, let's just add a shell. Okay, we'll take off the outer mount and let's do an inner mount. Let's do maybe like uh, 1.5, that should be fine. And we can convert that to edible we'll pulling out to get rid of the shell. And we'll just come in here and let's just chamfer maybe these two inner edges. So loop them. Chamfer, we'll do that with a really small amount. Uh, maybe around 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 with maybe two segments here just so we have a nice edge. Okay, and I'm also just going to add an extra uh, segment around the outside here so these polygons aren't so long. Let's do it on both the inside and outside. So just grab an edge there, ring those, connect them up, and let's do maybe like two. Let's do three. All right, just to break up the long polygons and hit OK. All right, so let's smooth this thing out and see how it looks. Let's get rid of the selection brackets. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need to do for the spout. Okay, and I think the gap's okay between the two pieces. Um, again, we'll adjust that later if we need to. All right, so one more piece here that goes on the inside, uh, this piece here. So let's go over and grab another cylinder, draw that out right in the center, give it some height. All right, we'll just align it to the other piece here so we know it's centered. 
Again, X, Y, Z, pivot, and pivot. Okay, and we'll just maybe leave that up there. Let's bring the height down a bit. Okay, and I don't believe it sticks out the bottom at all. Uh, it's pretty much right on the same, uh, the, at the same height. So let's just take it up a little bit more. Something like that. Okay, and the radius might be a little too big. Let's take it down a little bit. Let's do about nine, maybe 10. Okay, and we'll convert the cylinder to a pulley. Grab that bottom polygon there. And let's grab the top one as well. Let's do an inset on this. Take that up just a bit. Hit OK, hit bridge. And we'll simply just chamfer this down, maybe a bit here on the bottom. So let's loop those two edges. Another chamfer. And we'll just tighten that up a little bit more. Give it an extra segment, maybe. And OK. All right, we can actually get rid of the top polygons. We don't even need those. All right, so let's go to select the top polygons here and delete them. OK, and we really don't need the inside to be that long either. So let's grab the top border there on the inside. OK, well, let's bring this down a little bit. Oops. All right, so we just have it kind of punched up in the inside there. Maybe a little bit more. Around halfway is probably good. Okay, and we can smooth that out if you want. Uh, it's not necessary, you know, to smooth all these pieces. Um, we have probably enough edges in there to get a smooth look with some smoothing groups. But uh, again, I'm not worried about the poly count at all, so I'm just going to turbo smooth it to be a little bit quicker here. Okay, so let's see. I think we're looking okay for size. Just going to change the color of these two pieces to black. Let's put on our blue sugar. Okay, and I think we might want to make that a little bit uh, closer, the gap between these pieces. So I'm going to select the two center parts there and just scale them up slightly to close the gap a little bit more. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. Uh, next thing to do is the LEDs. Alright, so I'm just going to go into the bottom view here. Let's go back to wireframe F3. Let's zoom in on one of the holes here for the LEDs. And let's go down to extended primitives in the crate panel and let's grab an oil tank. Uh, you could use a cylinder for this if you want, but an oil tank should work fine. So I'm just going to drag that out over the hole here, give it some height, roll over the cap just a little bit, and we'll just eyeball it into the center here. And we need to take the radius down a little bit. Let's also increase the sides to say 24 and just crank the radius down there just a bit. Okay, and we'll just move it up into position here. Okay, we don't really need it to be that rounded over, I don't think. Let's adjust the cap height here a little bit. It's about 1.6 on the cap height. Okay, and let's convert that to double poly. Go into the left view here, let's go to polygon, grab the top polygons and delete them. And we'll smooth these parts down a bit to shorten it up. And we could probably also just chamfer this edge here down to smooth it out a little bit more. All right, so I'm just gonna loop this outer edge here. And chamfer it, take that way down. And we'll do about 0.2 or so, and OK. And let me just change the color here. And if you really want to, you can smooth this out as well. OK, we also want to make sure that's tucked up a little bit more. I'm just going to center the pivot on this. And we'll just push it up a little bit more on the inside. All right, that should be fine. So let's name this guy, we'll just call it LED01. And let's make a couple copies here in the bottom view. All right, so just hold down shift, 
drag it over to the next hole, try to center it, choose two for the copy number, and we'll just you know kind of center each one of these quickly. Let me turn off this realistic shading as well. So you can see the gap there. Alright, and again, this is you know it's a minor detail, so just quickly center those up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna change the color of these to black. And we'll see how she looks. All right, again, I'm thinking that spell might be a little too long, but let's unhide all and see. Definitely a little too long. Also might be a little bit small. Grab these pieces here for a second. Oops. I was trying to figure out if we should make it a little bit bigger or not. Don't want to make it too big, that's for sure. Um, let's maybe shorten it up a little bit and we'll see how it looks. So I'm going to select both pieces there, okay? The spout and the inner spout. And let's drop on maybe an FFD here, a 2x2 two two FFD. Okay, we'll drop this down to control points. Grab the two bottom verts. I'm just going to straighten this up just a little bit. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Um, again, later on, if we want to change the, sh the uh, size of it, we can do that. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it until we have the rest of it done. And then we can adjust things later on if we need to. All right, so let's collapse this down to Animal Poly. Take it rid of the FFD, and let's undo that for a second. I want to make sure that we don't have ice line display checked on our Turbo Smooth, that's just going to screw up our mesh. All right, so we'll just drop this above the FFD here, and then we'll click on this, right click, convert to, and that'll, that'll get rid of the FFD for us, but keep the Turbo Smooth on top. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with the inner here. Drag the Turbo Smooth above the FFD, click on the FFD, right click, and collapse to. Okay, and just make sure you have no uh, weird shading there. Okay, so that's going to take care of most of that. Uh, later on, we'll come back and we'll do the screws, um, as well as start maybe getting cracking on the tank here at the back and that cup stand in the front. Okay, before we actually wrap up this section, um, I think we might want to adjust a little bit of the shape of the inside here. Um, Let's maybe grab this main part here as well as this piece and this one and we'll hide everything else for a second. I just want to see if we can fit these together a little bit better than what we have. I'm just going to switch my bottom view there to the uh, top by hitting T and I just want to see if we can you know, kind of shape this a little bit more. Might not really need to do much on it. Just not really liking the gap that we have here uh, between these two pieces, so we might want to pull that back a bit. Let me just hide this top piece for a second. Let's grab this one. And let's see if we can just slightly adjust this. Alright, I think we want to have more of an angle on the side here. Uh, let's just cut this in half. I'm going to delete the turbo smooth for a second. Let's go into polygon here. Delete the left half. And let's see if we can do something here to kind of shape this a little bit better. All right, let's go in here to Vertex, and I'm just going to grab the verts here around that piece that we modeled out. Okay, and let's maybe, let's maybe just move this a little bit back. I want to kind of angle this here to kind of fit a little bit better with this. All right, so I'm going to move that up a little bit here. All right, let's also move these verts down just slightly. And, you know, this is a really minor detail. You really don't need to do this if you don't want to, but uh, I'll just, you know, cover how to fit it together a little bit better. Uh, before we wrap this section up. All right, so I'm just going to kind of angle this manually just a little bit. We want to make sure that we don't have them intersecting but we want to have them a little bit closer together. Okay, something like that. <clears throat> and you can see that's sticking into it a little bit there so I'm just going to move it back slightly. 
We'll smooth the whole thing back. We don't want to change the angle. So just a little bit until we clear that uh, back corner here. Okay, we might need to adjust the height a little bit. Let's maybe reselect this main part here. Drop back down to the vertex on this one. Let's just slightly move the top of this up just a little bit. Again, we don't want to intersect the corner there too much on the inside here. So it's going to pull it down slightly just a little bit. Okay, you can see that's still sticking through this section a little bit, and we can fix it by just you know slightly tweaking these verts back. But again, I don't think it's really that necessary that we you know modify the inside shape of that. You can't really see it, so uh, let's just leave it like that for now. Let's also just go into the top view here. All right, let's put our uh, symmetry back on this uh, on the X. Make sure they touch up. Convert it back to edible poly, and just re-smooth it with a turbo smooth two iterations. Right, I'm just going to unhide all here so we can see how this is fitting. Okay, we just want to close up, you know, as many of these uh, gaps between parts as we can, so it looks like you know these pieces are actually somehow attached together in here. I definitely don't want to look like it's just floating in space. Uh, that's not going to look very good at all. All right, and I don't think we really need to modify that back shelf at all. I think we'll just leave that alone. Okay, so just a minor adjustment there. And we'll continue to do that as we uh, work along here. Okay, so let's just call this uh, done for part four. And in the next section, I think we'll start uh, getting to that cup stand. Uh, let's just look at the reference of that for a second. Okay, so we have the cup stand here. And uh, as I mentioned before, this is pretty simple. Uh, it'll be pretty quick for us to model out. I don't think we'll do you know the threads on the inside here or anything like that. Uh, it's really not necessary. We're not going to see it. So we'll probably just go with you know the basic shape. Um, and then we can start cracking probably on the back of the tank here, which is a little bit more uh, complicated. We have some cuts in here as well as this uh, extruded kind of shelf that uh, comes out of the back here that the tank actually sits on. And that needs to be cut into the body here and here, which is uh, going to be a little bit difficult for us to do uh, with the, what we have right now. Uh, but yeah, we'll tackle these two parts in the next section and then we'll start actually building out that tank finally. Okay, so let's wrap it up here, and I uh, hope you learned something from this and found it somewhat useful. Um, and, you know, if you get stuck or anything along the way or you have a question, uh, just throw up a comment on the page on City Tuts, and I'll do my best to get in there and answer it as soon as I can. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, it's best to come over and leave your comments or questions uh, on the page on City Tuts. Uh, there's a link under the video on YouTube linking over to the post on City Tuts, so you can just click that to come through and leave your comments there. Uh, we really don't have time to you know, get over and answer questions on YouTube that often, so uh, rather than us missing it altogether, if you want, if you need to answer or help with something, just come over and leave it on the uh, post on CD Tuts and we'll actually see it. And if you're following another tutorial, the author won't be able to see it if it's on our YouTube channel, so uh, definitely leave your comments over on the page on CD Tuts for any of the tutorials you're following. Okay, so let's wrap it up there, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next section, so thanks for watching.